All right, can you guys online hear me? Oh, no. Can you guys online hear me okay? And also see the screen. Okay, great, thanks. <coughs> All right, well, welcome. Um, today we're gonna go over the whole steps again for solving a circuit using the Laplace technique. So this will be your quiz on Friday, is you'll be given a circuit and it will ask you to solve it, a variable in there, in the time domain and then ask you at a specific time what that answer is. So that's how it will check if you did it correctly or not. So for this one, um, it's asking to solve for V out in the circuit. And so V out is, is here. And so you're going to need to do all of the steps. Um, you're given the Vs is 11 U of T. So to find those initial conditions, what will you use for the value for that source? Correct. So because you are coming in from the left side into zero minus, that would be zero because of the U of T. Does that make sense why you would use zero for that source? So that's going to be the value you use to determine that initial value for those components. Okay, so go ahead and the first step is to transform this into the, the Laplace domain first. So redraw the circuit um, with the correct values for the source and the inductor and the capacitor elements.
<laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Would it be one over n squared? Or one over n squared? Yeah, one over n squared. Okay. One over n squared. Oh, one of them says t. Isn't it just complete with t? Not complete with t? Mm-hmm. Which one? Oh, what did you say? So it's 11 times one t. Here. In in the S domain, that changes over to the Laplace transform. So. Correct. Yeah. So the value of that source is eleven over S. All right, so for the time equals zero minus, actually, actually I'm going to draw this one first. Okay, so for the for the time domain or for the frequency domain, you're going to want to have um, you transform over that 11 u of t. The 11 is constant, so that's 11 times the transform of u of t, which is 1 over s. So this becomes.
11 over s is the value for that one. And then IL of 0 minus you need to find and VC of 0 minus you need to find. And then the inductor becomes 1 times s. And then C was 0.5, which is 1, 1 half. And so it's 2 over S is one way to write that one. And then to find, this will be a value of 0 because of the U of T. Remember that U of T is 0 until time zero and then it goes to a one. So it's just multiplying whatever that function is times this. So anything before time zero is zero. So you use zero volts for that. And then solving this, if this is zero, VC, this will be an open and this will be a short and then solving for the IL will be going through this, IL and VC. So IL of 0 will be 0, and VC of 0 will be 0. So those will be shorted. And so those being 0 can reduce this circuit down a little bit more. So this will still be LL. L over S, but then that short will become a wire. This becomes S. And this will just be the value of 2 over S. So this will be the circuit that you want to solve. I tend to like to put my ground on the bottom. And then this one is going to have two unknown nodes. So this node I can label like V out because that's what I'm trying to solve. This, let's see, what did I use the variables for? I actually called this V1, I actually called this V2, but V2 is equal to V out. And then this value we already know, it's 11 over S. So we can say we have two unknown nodes um, I'm going to also replace these values just to make it a little easier to see visually. And this is 6, this one was 2, and this one was 4. So this is the circuit that we want to find for V2, which will equal V out. Okay, I'll give you a minute to try to write those equations. All right, any questions from anybody about how to transform this? Because that is one of the biggest steps, is transforming this. But everybody good? Okay. Everybody good online?
Yeah, but it won't get you the right form. <laughs> so it won't help you on the test. I purposely pick them so that you can't use it. So you have to go through the steps of it. You could manipulate it from whatever it gives you, yeah. You could use it that way. So it, it would be good to use to check what you have. So yeah, you could use trig identities and manipulate it into the same form that I, I'm requesting. What's the, what's the last thing you turn in lap one for full credit? I don't remember the, let me look at the schedule. Do, so to do what? To pose as a graduating senior, I just saw a message that said, graduating from your job, apply here. You can apply, but then it denies you graduation. If you just apply? Oh, no, it's not for graduation, for a job. Oh, for a job. Oh, sorry. Pose as Oscar degree. Yeah, they'll, they'll want to see your diploma. Yeah, <laughs> coming <TV>. soon. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, usually they give you an end date by the time you need to turn in your, like show your diploma. Or they need a letter from an advisor saying that you are going into BSMS and have completed. We are all of our advisors? Yeah. Cool. But I won't write you a, but I won't write you a letter if you haven't qualified. <laughs> All right, I'm looking for the syllabus. Where's the course schedule? Okay, so lab one was due February 13th. You have two weeks. Let's see. So tomorrow would be the last day before. Yeah, but after that, it's still just a 10% doc. Mm -hmm. So if you got 100, you would just get 90. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, at least turn it in I'll as much in. as much as what you have. Okay, I would suggest I turning in as much as you have, but then you can redo. So lab work, you guys all here. You can redo any lab work. So if you did, like you got 90, you wanted 100, you could redo the portion that you didn't get Without the grades on without a late penalty after you've turned it in the first time. Oh. Well, it's it's a what like it's a 10% penalty between the difference. So you get oh. one point off instead okay. of say, all 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, cuz then that's the same if you don't submit anything cuz but if you oh, so if you don't submit anything then you're just capped at 90%. Yeah, you'd be capped at 90%. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> but if you turn in a portion say you got 80 out of 100 and you turn in the 20 other points later, you would only get docked two, two points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, so turn in what you have at least by tomorrow <laughs> and then work on what you don't have to complete the rest.
sounds weird. Okay. Anybody get any answers yet? <laughs> I'm still working towards getting a ping that we train. I'm still working on finding that, that uh, what's it called? V2. Okay. Yeah, do I have to make it all clean? I'm pretty sure you do. So <laughs> let's get the equation sets first, see if everybody's on the right track with the equations. So. I use um, V1 and V2 as my unknowns. And writing that, I'm going to write a node voltage equation at V2. So that one's going to be V2 over 4 for this current. This current's going to be V2 minus V1 over 2 over S. And then this current is V2 minus 11 over s over 6. So there's one equation. And then the node voltage at V1 change colors. Um, this current is going to be V1 over s. This current will be V1 minus V2 over 2 over s or I could just say it's minus that blue one, which was V2 minus V1 over 2 over S, and it would give me the same quantity there. This one is going to be V1 minus 11 over S over 2 equals 0. So from here, I'm going to want to get, I have two equations and two unknowns. V1 and V2. So I can choose which way I want to solve this. Um, I'm going to try and get this one only has one V1, so I'm going to just combine all the V2s together. So this will be 1 fourth. The 2 over S on the bottom switch swaps up to be S over 2 plus, oh wait, did I write that one wrong? 1 over 6, yeah. 1 over 6, and then a minus V1 times S over 2. And then that's equal to the 11 over S is a minus, so that goes over to positive. And then you combine the 6 and the S that's on the bottom together. And then this one. Combining, I have more V1s, so I'm going to combine all the V1s together. So 1 over S plus S over 2 plus 1 half minus V2 S over 2. And that will be equal to the two, 11 over 2 S. So then I would plug in, I'll call this 1 and this 2. So plug in 1 into 2, or 2 into 1. I'm going to plug uh, plug 2 into 1, which gives me V2 S over 2. And then the minus s over 2, and then multiplied by the 11 over s, or 2s, plus the v2 over s over 2, and then that's all divided by the 1 over s plus s over 2 plus 1 half, all equal to 11 over 6s. So then I want to get another common denominator here, so I'm going to make this as 2s on the bottom, 
and that becomes a 2 on the top, um, s squared plus s. And then multiplying it with the top portion, it will cancel out the two s's. Let's see, 11 over 2s. Do this um, plus v two s over two. That portion times two s over two plus s squared plus s. So this will cancel here, and that becomes an s squared on the top. Sorry. Where did I lose you? No. Oh, you found it. Okay. So this then can be reduced down to this form. All right, so another way to do this so that's going to be the factored form of that. So one other way to do this is with Wolfram. So with Wolfram, I just plugged in, um, I used V2 was Y, V1 was X, and then I plugged in S was Z, just because it doesn't like some of those variables. So S, it looks as it's seconds. <laughs> And so you can just put in a solve function, type in the two equations, and then solve it for x and y in terms of z. I don't know why it came back with this, but um, it then gives you x and y. So x was v1. And you notice here there's 11 in front of the z squared. So you want to bring out the 11. And so this would be 88s plus 55 divided by 11 times s squared plus 17 over 11s plus 10 over 11. And then you want to factor this one. V2, which is what we're actually looking for, is going to be the 22 4s squared plus s plus 2 s times, or 11s times s squared plus 17 over 11, s plus 10 over 11. And then you can just factor this one, which should give you the same. So s is a minus 17 oops, over 11 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 11 squared, uh, 10 over 11. Let's see what that ends up being. So to get it into the factor form, we have an S plus something. You do need to take it out. Yeah. So you always want to make sure that that S squared term get to, to 1. So bring out any of those constants. Otherwise, you don't get the right factored form. Good. So 17 over 11. Okay. Oh. So these might not be right. Oh, divided by 2. Okay, I don't think this did it. Oh, I forgot to divide it all by two. It's like it's not dividing by two. Okay. 
Okay, minus point seven seven plus or minus the point five six j. And so those should be the same, yeah. Plus or minus point five six j. All right, so you can use Wolfram, you can just do it you can just do it um, algebraically, whichever way you're kind of comfortable. Wolfram is definitely a little bit more efficient. You could use other calculators that also do the solve function. So now we have V2, which was our V out. Okay, so take a minute. I'll let you guys solve the rest of this. So V2 is equal to V out. I'm just going to say this is equal to V out. I'm not going to rewrite it. So what do you need to do from here? Inverse. So you're going to try and take the inverse function of this. Yeah, correct. Or inverse Laplace. Laplace. So, so you'll need to use those partial fraction expansion and then match it up to the table and then inverse it. You suck. <laughs> Not a fan. Not a fan of the partial Simply fraction. Put. It's been like the only thing I've talked about in school for the last two weeks. I'm still confused. What part's confusing? Um, I think getting to the roots of S was the weirdest for me. Like, I don't know, maybe it's not as much confusing as it is discouraging. I see a bunch of numbers and then I see your factored form at the bottom, like S times S plus 0.77 plus J is 0.56. How did we get to there? I feel like it's so procedural, but I don't have the intuition to know what the procedure is. I've never even So from this equation to the next one? Okay, wait, so you substitute V1 into the V2 equation, and then you just plug and chuck to get that? Oops. Uh -huh. We solve the roots, and you plug it into the um, x equals negative t plus 1 square root, the square root minus 4 AC. What we do is to get those two roots, and then we do the partial fraction function. Oh, so that's what I was doing. So yeah, here I just combined, well, it ended up being this one. Okay, I'll go back through that then. Is that something that we can plug into Wolfram? Like, if we get our two equations, yeah, so this is, so those are the two equations just top typed in there. Yeah, so then you type it in there and then it'll give you that. It gave me, you can see here, it gave me that okay. X and so Y in terms of the Z, which is my S squared. Okay. And then from this, then I just need to factor okay. the bottom yeah. portion of it. Okay. okay, it's not as bad as it seems, you just gross and ugly. It's disgusting. So, yeah. <laughs> if you're doing it by hand like this. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here just trying to, trying to get to there from uh, doing it by hand. Yes. It's really ugly. Yeah. That's a really, really ugly number. So this ends up being 2 over 6. That's true. The top is the fourth on the bottom. This squared. Mm -hmm. MATLAB, MATLAB does this too, but you have to like create, you make it symbolic first for all the variables and then you have to use the solve function and I find Wolfram to be easier. MATLAB seems like a software we need to taught so that we can know how to use software. I have an R. 
I haven't tried Chat GPT yet for these solutions. <laughs> but it cannot solve these circuits. I've like I have put these circuits in there and they never come out right. It can't even do like a KVL. If you baby it with Chat GPT four, it can get pretty like if you do half the steps for it and you explain the circuit carefully. It can get pretty close, but it, it'll still misinterpret a lot of stuff a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. And, and the loops. Yeah. yeah, and the loops that it gives you are not correct usually. For me, it's like a Chinese person, but like, I don't explain voltage to them. It's not for For me, if I rarely use chat GPT, I'm going to automatically just use it as just a fact of that. I use it as a starting point, not as a as, I use it yeah. as a tool for starting and brainstorming, not as a commentation or anything. More than I well, before. I've never used chat. Honestly, still that chat, chat, chat I think I've ever pretty, pretty good at it's pretty good at com like simple computations. I don't think I've actually ever actually used it in an academic setting. So it's just been back to that on my own time. Have you ever taken a class where you have to write a five page paper? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's but it can fluff the short It can fluff it. I don't need AI to write five page papers on absolutely nothing. I need AI to help me condense it down to something understandable. Yeah, I think it is helpful if you're like, explain this complex con concept such as this. And explain it's. Explain it like a five. Yeah. And so it, like a five year old. So then it like will dumb down a concept and then you have to ask it more about that, con like the concepts within there. And so I think it is helpful for like a complex concept to kind of dumb it down, but yeah. It's, let's see, 11 over success. All right, you guys. I was a little distracted. Yeah, got you distracted. Okay. Is that plus seventy-seven or point seven seven? Point seven seven. Sorry, point disappeared on that one. Point seven seven. So then this is the point that we would start to mimic the partial Yep. Yeah. Yep. You would use partial fraction expansion here. You. So noticing that you have the complex conjugates on both of those, mm -hmm. that's going to be a sign to, that you're going to want to get it into the form of most likely something like this. So this would be your form you're trying to.
So I, I typically yeah, put it into a decimal form. We're running out of time, so I'm going to leave it as an exercise to get these values for A, B, and B, B complex conjugate. So exercise. So you should end up with 4.4S, or 4.4 over S, 7E to the minus J, 75.15. And then OB 7E plus J, 75.5 or 15. Okay, so Can using that. Uh huh. Okay. So that's the nice thing is once you find one, you just take the complex conjugate of the other. Yeah. So. So this root, when we were solving for the root here, so you s was equal to minus b plus or minus. So it was a minus 0 0.77 plus or minus 0.56j. So using this, what will this translate into v out of t? What does the 4.4 over S become? Uh, U of T. So 4.4 U of T. And then. Two, two times what though? Right, two times seven. So we bring out the constant on each of these. So you have to take two times seven, so it'd be 14. And then what is A in this case? Uh, Correct, so A is 0.77. B is what? 0.56 and theta is? So be careful of the signs. So notice with this having a plus, this is also plus. But in this case, this is a plus and this is a minus. Uh, so it's negative 75.15. This would be negative 75.15. So this becomes a negative 0.77t cosine 0.56t and then a plus 75.15 degrees times u of t. And this is all in volts. In volts. All right, questions? So I was going to try. Like, if you like solve them out for like A times, you know, if you have A, B, and C. Let's see, it would be. I need more to confuse them when I came, sir. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's 
Or if he's out. What I was going to say is what they think of jokes about, like, this isn't even calculus, this is college algebra. And it's circuit three. Oh, there should be times when women talk and it's too good. That's not. Uh, could you could you look over my work and, and let me know where I went wrong later? <laughs> so I'll just leave that open to the page. That doesn't that doesn't help. No, we also have to transform it in the middle. So all of these I mean it might not help, but I just want to know where it might be wrong. That's all. Like if you can look over and let me know later because I need to go. Okay. Okay.